If you're an international radiographer and would want to pursue working in one of the maritime provinces, specifically Nova Scotia, which is Latin for New Scotland, then you're on the right track because for today's video, I'll show you how to obtain a license there. That way you can pursue your dream of living and working in Nova Scotia as an international medical radiation technologist. Don't forget again to watch the whole video so you'll be guided accordingly and of course, you can subscribe, like, share and put comments too. Let's begin. Hi, it's me again, your international radiographer. To go to the website of Nova Scotia's MIRTP, you can either go to CAMRT's website and click the link or just Google Nova Scotia College of Medical Imaging and Radiation Therapy Professionals and this page will show up. Hover your mouse then to the applicants page and click internationally educated new applicants. So here you'll see that they mentioned that if you got your license outside Canada, then you are considered an IEMIRTP or Internationally Educated Medical Imaging and Radiation Therapy Professionals. And when you have your license and want to check your status in the public register, then you'll notice that they will categorize you under International Red Tech. So there are four pathways that you need to follow and it's up to you which amongst these pathways fits your situation and I will try to explain in this video what they are as brief as possible. The first one is for those applicants who are currently working in a regulated province in Canada. Here in Canada, there are provinces that are regulated and there are also those which are not and regulated means that not only do you need to pass the national exam which is the CAMRT but you also need to obtain a license in that specific province for you to be able to work. Example of regulated province is Alberta. An example of a province that is not regulated is British Columbia. So let's say you are a resident in Alberta and have been working as a radiographer there for quite some time and would want to move and practice in Nova Scotia. Then this is the pathway that you need to choose. You will then need to tell your regulating body to fill out and complete a CFTA form or the Canadian Free Trade Agreement form and forward it to NSC MIRTP. Once this is done, you can go ahead and click the online application form and submit supporting documents such as proof of identity, eligibility to work in Canada, proof of good conduct, currency like the CME, proof of PLI, jurisprudence, and proof of payment of fees. The second pathway is for those applicants who are currently working in an unregulated province in Canada. Here you need to demonstrate to them that you have been successfully assessed either by the Canadian Association of Medical Radiation Technologists or Sonography Canada and have successfully written the national exam in your chosen area of practice. If you think that you have everything they need, then click that standard registration process. As you can see, there are quite some of these unregulated provinces. The steps on how to register in this one is quite similar to the first pathway only there are a few additions such as providing proof of completion of a Canadian accredited MRT, proof that you have successfully completed the national exam, and PLI. The third pathway is for those meeting criteria for expedited process. This pathway is best suited for those international red techs who are not currently licensed in Canada but would still want to be registered in Nova Scotia and take note there are two licensure pathways available for you in this category. The first one is the non-expedited pathway in which an international red tech does not hold a current license to practice as an MIRTP in Canada and even in the six designated countries such as Australia, Ireland, the Philippines, the UK, the USA, and New Zealand. And the second one is the expedited pathway in which if you, an international red tech, holds a current license and is registered in one of those six countries I have mentioned a while ago. This is actually riveting because I know a lot of people who has a license in Ireland or in the USA for example and if they would be interested to move in Canada then they can just choose this pathway as it is a lot easier. Do note also that they mentioned here that this pathway is for you again if you hold a current license in good standing and is not registered your license in Canada. If your license in one of those six countries has expired, then you better renew it otherwise it won't be applicable in this pathway. If you're already on this pathway, then the applications are submitted through NSC MIRTP's registration portal and there are some few things to consider when you apply and that is when you will log into your profile, you need to select the out-of-country applicant and you also need to submit two pieces of identification that shows your legal name and so if your name has changed, you may submit a marriage certificate and notarization of these documents are not required. 
They will also need to know if you really hold a current and registered license in one of the countries mentioned a while ago by doing some checks and reviews. And of course, you are required to submit an original copy of Venerable Sector Check. This is like a police clearance and this is easy to request, especially if you're already in Canada. Just follow their steps. Once everything is settled, you may start the application. There are also some links for applicants wanting to visit the website of CAMRT and even for the Sonography Canada exam process. And just like the other two pathways, you will also take the jurisprudence. Also remember that they mentioned here that all Canadian documents expires in 6 months while all international documents expires in 24 months after they were completed except for the IELTS because they always expire 24 months from the date of the test. The fourth pathway is for all other international applicants which means to say that if you are an international red tech applying for the first time and also does not meet the criteria on pathway number 3 will have their initial eligibility assessed and to do this, you need to email them so they can tell you what the procedures are and the requirements too. Basically, they will have your academic and clinical credentials assessed for Canadian equivalency, then if successful, write the national exam in your chosen area of practice. Now, you can also go to CAMRT's website and be assessed there first, confirm the assessment, take the exam and once pass, then go to Nova Scotia's website, but that would be a long route for you and more expensive too. If for some reason this is what you would like to follow because you're also not sure if you're moving to Nova Scotia, then the website has some of the documents that you need to submit to the CAMRT committee. Make sure you submit your documents and apply in a minimum of three months prior to the date of your writing the national exam. The certification exam, by the way, is offered three times a year. That's January, May, and September. The timelines for international red tags that have been employed in another Canadian province or territory as an MIRTP and have successfully written the CAMRT or Sonography Canada usually takes one to two weeks. For those under the expedited process, a decision in accessing the exam will be within three weeks from receiving all required documents. And here's the good news to this. Once approval to access the exam is granted, then you are eligible for a conditional license. For those under pathway 4, this process takes longer so you better strategize when you are going to contact and submit your documents to them and just like CAMRT, NSC MIRTP have 5 years from the last state of employment or graduation as a medical imaging or radiation therapy professionals to complete all the requirements to be registered. One thing that I like about their application is that recently they made an announcement that an international red tech can have a chance for a temporary conditional licensing once you have been granted access to the National Entry to Practice exam. You and your manager will then sign an acknowledgement letter and take note this is only a conditional license, so there are restrictions on what you can do and you will be supervised at all times by a licensed MIRTP of the same discipline as yours, and that manager should be in a good standing with the college. The temporary license will stay effective until the results of your national exam is released. So which pathway do you think should you choose then? And have you found the right place to live in Nova Scotia? Comment down below and let's have some interactions. Paalam!